I remember receiving quite a bit of, of, of flack on the, on the interwebs from folks in the forums that I paid such an exorbitant amount of money for a car that is clearly not worth it. And uh, I just I just stood by my thing. I think it's, it's, it's cool as hell and it's the only one. Hammers as a whole, they are they were rather rare. The the number that I and a number of other people who been around it longer than I have and were there when it was happening, they all say some something in the 30s is is the the approximate number. Uh, 13 cars in the U.S. The bulk of which worldwide were of course sedans. My understanding is that there were 12 coupes total between wide body and narrow body. I know with absolutes that at least one of those coupes got taken apart. It happened to get involved in a bit of a bit of a nasty divorce and uh, I guess it subsequently disappeared. And I, I know it's gone because I, I have some of the parts for it. They, they, they came my way along the years. So let's say there's 30-ish 30 30 -ish cars in the world, 13 Hammers US, um, let's say 20 sedans, 12 coupes, and of course the, the, the one wagon. And to, to be a Hammer, uh, first and foremost, needs to be a 124, whatever iteration, be it sedan, wagon, coupe. Then the engine, uh, I know there's some discussions amongst folks what's what, but really, in, in my estimation, what I can derive from any 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 literature I've read and people I spoke with, again, who were there when it was happening, M117 quad cam, you know, and that's that's it. No, no 117, 119, no 119, none of that needs to be this, and that's 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 a hammer. Otherwise, you have something else. As far as the hammer wagon is concerned, when it first came up for auction. I wasn't in a, in a position to necessarily purchase it, but I had a then client who was interested. And he said, hey, let's, uh, you know, grab your father and, you know, meet me out at Barrett Jackson and let's go take a look and verify these cars are what they're purported to be. Hopped on a plane, flew out, get out there. The wagon is obviously the wagon, you know, nautical, metallic blue, the rest of it, it's all there. Everything looks as it should. And uh, we get to talking about it, walking around it. And now we're discussing value, what we think it might go for, because they were all no reserve auctions. He says, I, I think 20G is the end of the world for this car. I said, Dude, no way. He says, this is worth worth 40 all day long. You pay 40 for this? Absolutely, I pay 40 for this. He said, well, if you're going to, if you want to go for 40 and you want to go for it, like, you know, we'll shake on it. I'm out. You know, you do your thing. Great. Small problem of I didn't have 40, <laughs> so that was a bit of an issue. So start making phone calls and uh, and putting it together, and then uh, oddly enough, a good friend of my father's from the Austin Healy days, he was actually there bidding, and we ran into him. He said, "Oh, I'll, I'll bid for you. Save you 500 bucks. Ain't got a paddle." So he was he was kind enough to help and uh, and all that, and it was easy too because I need to didn't need to have proof of funds with him because he was already authorized to bid the moon, he'd, he'd done quite well. So it all it all worked out very nicely. But, uh, but yeah, I think it was 40, 48.5 with premium and everything else. I remember receiving quite a bit of, of, of flack on the, on the interwebs from folks in the forums that I paid such an exorbitant amount of money for a car that is clearly not worth it. And uh, I just I just stood by my thing. I think it's, it's, it's cool as hell, it's the only one. Like, what's not to love? And so, got that home and that was a very, advantageous purpose but uh again just bought it because i thought it was the, the the coolest thing and you know i love wagons to begin with and then what better than a, than a hammer wagon at the time i had an e55 wagon so this is the, the precursor to that you know logical succession if you will and uh fill out the the, the earlier part of the, the phase needed some some sorting and hadn't had much attention i think since the late 90s and uh but uh after after all that yeah it's, it's been everywhere and then some and she she's worked flawlessly for us. But one thing I know was speaking with Richard about my wagon is when he was talking with Alfrecht, Alfrecht said, we'll never build a wagon. You're out of your mind for building a wagon. Like it's just too much. Cause, uh, uh, and one of the things about the wagon when it came here, it was, uh, was a diesel and not gas. And to convert a standard hammer, what a sedan, coupe, what have you, you know, a little 300E, 260E, what have you, hundred hours approximately, to do the full conversion. The wagon being diesel, and the first wagon they ever did was over 400 hours. 
Yes. So when they were selling the sedans and coupes for 160, 180, 190, and then they sold the wagon for 200, $200,000 car in 1987 doesn't seem like it'd be a lost leader, but relative to the other cars they were doing at the time, it absolutely was. This was, it was, it was the only reason they did it is because the gentleman who ordered it had basically placed an order for one of everything in the catalog, and in some cases two. So he had, he had spent so much that you know you're not going to deny your most prolific client uh, a special request just because you're going to lose a couple dollars with it. And that's why the wagon exists, basically. At the time, you know, the 80s being what they were, the, the land of excess, I can't think of any particular Mercedes car, tuner car, otherwise, that would have sold for, for, for more than this in that time frame. Later on, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, but at the time, I think this was probably, probably one of, if not the most expensive one to, to roll through. The wagon, to me, it was, you know, it was, was a, was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to get uh, a one-of-one, you know, those, those don't come along very often. And uh, when, I, when I bought it, even when I didn't have the money, I, I still thought it was, was undervalued. And I, I remember as, as, as the market has changed in, in recent years, you know, the, the realization that this is, this is, this is likely a, a seven-figure car now. And then thinking about it, additionally, over time, realizing that, you know, like, do I want to sell it? No. But at the same time, someone comes along and, and, and they have to have it. As, as much as I did, yeah, every, everything's for sale for a price, and probably around, around two is, is where it's at now. And at that point, I could actually, I think, go to sleep and not, not have my eyes snap open a few minutes later and, 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 and feel as though that, you know, I've shortchanged myself or the car and uh, basically giving it the attention and value that I, I think it genuinely deserves. My dad told me many times there's always another car. Now, maybe there won't be another hammer wagon exactly, but there is always something else out there that's interesting and, uh, and you can have fun with. And I've been really fortunate to have been curator of these cars along the way, and I have had a lot of fun. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a good run. I feel, feel lucky. Better to be lucky than good sometimes. <laughs> The Simple Lease from Premier Financial Services is the most powerful tool in the world of exotic car financing. You get all the benefits of a lease, like the tax preference as well as the low payments, plus the benefits of a traditional loan. You can build up equity, pay it off at any time, and along the way you'll know exactly where you stand with their easy to understand amortization table. Premier's amazing nationwide team is standing by and ready to help you own your dream car in a way that's easier and more affordable than you could ever imagine. Whether it's a vintage Porsche, a modern McLaren, or a multi-million dollar car collection, Premier is here to help. They've been supporting Vinwicky for the last six years, and we certainly love them for that. But even more so, we love them because they make it easier and more affordable than you could imagine to own your dream car.